Das ist doch geil. Arguably London's most famous cemetery in Highgate. It is massive, apparently. There are thousands upon thousands of Gothic-style tombstones, and there are also a number of very famous interments here as well. Karl Marx, you know, of like Marxism, socialist stuff. W.H. Smith, of stationary fame. And also, someone else who I forget. Have you seen how far this goes? Like, look, it's like, Like, they gave us a map. Was I a lot closer there than I was when you first pan round? Bit scary, fair enough. It's, it's weird, it's like there's a map and then it has like, rather than like, oh, this is like, you know, West 34th Street or like a Starbucks. It's like, this is where Patrick Caulfield is buried. That's weird, I feel. There it is. What is it? Their remains were removed and reinterred on the 23rd of November 1954 at the place nearby where a monument was. Oh, so they dug them up and put them over there. So they actually are over there, but originally he was buried there. Got it. Interesting. Do you reckon they had to smash it to get them out? That'd be a shame. So behind me there is the final resting place of Karl Marx. You saw before that he was actually originally buried just over there. But I think that's when they realized he was a big deal. They like moved him there and now he, he's got a massive head, which is good. So, there you go. So in my opinion, one of the best tombstones in this entire cemetery is the one designed by pop artist Patrick Caulfield because <laughs> um, he designed it himself and it pretty much just tells you how he's doing. He's dead. Time to go. So now we are at Golders Green Crematorium, which is actually the first ever crematorium to be opened in London. It's non-denominational, meaning that people of all faiths or no faith can be buried here, which includes Keith Moon, the drummer from The Who, uh, Sigmund Freud, the founder of psychoanalysis, and Bram Stoker, who was the author of Dracula. So we're gonna go and try and find that. It's not like as scary as the other ones, <laughs> although, I may have spoken too soon because what is that? It's a cement rotunda and I wonder who's in it. Maybe it's Dracula. Let's find out. What is this? It doesn't say anything about who's that is. What, what? But it's chained shut, thank God. So I think a lot of the graves that we're looking for are gonna be in the columbarium up there, which is basically like a big hollow, like sort of tower that has like internments all around the edge. We'll go and have a look now and see if we can find it. So we just got back from the East Columbarium, which is where Bram Stoker's ashes are kept. We went to the front desk and we're like, hi, we'd like to come see Bram Stoker's um, urn, is that weird? And they were like, no, no, it's fine. Just go down to the cloisters and a man with white hair dressed in black will be there to meet you. We were like, okay. So we got there and he could not have been nicer. Basically the East Columbarium is this big kind of like square tower thing, just full of historic ashes. Um, Bram Stoker's was in there. He says they get people coming all year round to see Bram Stoker's urn. He also told us that in this lawn behind me, there are 100,000 bodies. So we're just gonna deal with our mortality for a second because that's a lot. You know, with it being Halloween and all, 
my, I could kind of hope this was going to be like really like eerie and creepy and I think some of the other ones will be but this one's actually just really nice don't you think I don't know I like to think that if I if I was gonna die I, I'd yeah I'd be buried here why not seems pretty nice The night is beginning to fall, it's getting darker now, and we are in the creepiest one that we could be in. We are in Abney Park Cemetery in Stoke Newington. Now this one in particular is creepy. You can no longer be buried here, they stopped doing that in 1970. Um, so hopefully we'll find some weird sh This one is officially a bit weird. There's a bird in the myself. So the way to get through this cemetery is basically you kind of have to like just get through the thick of it. I kind of have to just fight through the fray. So that's what we're going to do. Come on. He's really scared. <laughs> Look, and then if you come in, there's like all these like, like that one there. Absolutely rife with plumage. This may have been a mistake. Okay, let's go out there. I found a path, thank God. The scary thing about this is it's like, do we go left or do we go right? And to be honest, all signs lead to no. So I've been looking for the old church and I think I finally found it. Um, so it's not a functioning church anymore. It's like completely like, it's not boarded up, it's like wired up. Um, and if we get a bit closer, you might recognize it from the music video for Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. They've filmed it here. There's something really weird about like boarded up church in the middle of a completely abandoned graveyard. No one has been buried here in 50 years, 49 years, which is just like quite odd. Do you think we can see inside? Oh, look at that. Well, it's getting darker. This is really creepy. So there you have it, London's creepiest cemeteries. I have been doing this all day and feel officially really weird, especially ending in this one, which is like terrifying. Um, I had no idea that there was this amount of dead people in the city. You kind of think it's this like hustling, bustling, like really high rise place with like people everywhere. But it's actually when you come to places like this that you realize that there's so much space, there's so much overgrown like greenery happening. And also you notice how many people were here and now aren't. Like we have seen thousands upon thousands of bodies today. And um, that's enough to keep me freaked out until Christmas. So happy Halloween. <laughs>